Good morning. Uh, I'm Jim Marty. Thanks a lot for joining us here this morning I'm from the University of Minnesota. And I'd like to spend the next uh, few minutes uh, covering uh, answers to a, a question that your students may raise. Is, you know, I'm excited about nanotechnology, but can I get a job in it? Is there are there careers to be had here? And uh, <clears throat> yes, the short answer is yes. And I didn't think that the, uh, the longer answer is there's just lots of different paths to uh, working in nanoscience and nanoengineering and applying what they may learn in a, in a nanoscience program. Uh, kind of laying out the terrain, there's uh, nanotechnology is found in a lot of different applications. And so there's a lot of different job titles associated with it. Uh, you may work as an engineer or your students may work as an engineer. Uh, here you're developing the devices and materials that operate with some key parameter that's uh, important at the nanoscale. So electronics and material sciences are areas that nano engineers may work in. Farther upstream in the development chain, you have the nanoscientists working with more fundamental uh, studies of new materials such as graphene that present real uh, promising potential for new devices and materials and products. But at this point, you, uh, they are working with more uh, basic science. Uh, there's a large number of people who use nanotechnology knowledge in a techni technician or a technologist role. At many, many companies, there's uh, laboratories that employ technicians that are doing um, routine uh, analysis, uh, material testing, quality control, and so forth. So the fair number of people that uh, don't have nanotechnology in their job title that are doing that as a technician or a technologist. And then well, probably the largest the picture, group, see, uh, Wherever you push, it's going to move. Is there a question? Okay. Uh, maybe the largest group involved using nanotechnology are people that are using some nanotechnology as an end user, maybe in manufacturing or in uh, environmental monitoring or uh, the like. There, it's uh, helpful to understand more about what's happening at the nanoscale simply so you can be uh, more confident in what you're, what you're measuring, what you're testing, what you're carrying out. So all of these are called, or could be called nanotechnology careers. Uh, the trouble when students maybe go out and do a little searching on their own for, for jobs is that they aren't always called nanotechnology. Uh, so when, in answer to the question, are there jobs out there in nanotechnology, you're going to get a, a variety of answers. Uh, uh, one thing we do know on this, the, the top uh, statistic there, science, technology, engineering, mathematics jobs, STEM jobs, did increase about 20% over the first decade and a half of the 21st century. Um, the National Science Foundation has always said that there are going to be large numbers of nano, new, nan, new nanotechnology jobs needed. A, a 2010 estimate was about 2 million by uh, the year 2020. Um, that, that number is uh, accurate depending on how you again define nanotechnology jobs. Uh, on the other hand, if, if you do like I do, I went to uh, careerexplorer.com website to see what the uh, what some other numbers are out there. Uh, this was a you know, relatively modest number of nanotechnology engineers quoted and a relatively modest job growth in that market, about six and a half percent over the next 10 years. Now that's low simply because nanotechnology jobs encompass a much wider variety of tasks and skill sets than just quote nanotechnology engineers. So uh, to really look at uh, possibilities for um, your students in nanotech, you have to kind of look at a, a huge range of job titles. This is a partial list of the job titles that uh, I had some of my students look for when we were looking. I, I was involved in a two-year technical training program in nanoscience and technology. And you know, looking for a nanotechnician uh, is not going to reveal too many hits. But all of the job titles listed on this page employ some aspect of knowledge of nanoscale phenomena and nanotechnology applications. And so these are all areas in which we were able, uh, our, our, my students were able to find leads and we actually placed a number of students in jobs with similar titles to this. So that's what the job titles might be. Where would they work? What kind of companies, what kind of environments would nanotechnology, uh, uh, students who go into nanotechnology do? So uh, a big employer of nanotechnology savvy workers is the electronics industry, integrated circuit manufacturing, the big players like Intel, AMD, uh, Qualcomm, Hewlett Packard, as well as a number of smaller players 
doing the task of fabricating integrated circuits and integrated circuit-based devices. And this is a task which would lead the worker into a clean room environment using the tools of lithography to uh, fabricate millions or billions of small transistor-based circuits on a chip of silicon to, to form an integrated circuit. Uh, this is a very cyclical industry. It goes up and down, as, as you may know, if you have people who, uh, who have friends who work in the area. But right now, this industry really needs people. Uh, there is a shortage of integrated circuit chips, you may have heard, in this country, which is affecting downstream manufacturers uh, in the automotive industry and, and uh, electronics and so forth. And that is uh, part of it is, uh, is personnel related. I've had a number of companies local to the Twin Cities contact me and see if I, got, if I know of anybody who can step into the clean room role and do some lithography. So this is a, this is a hot area right now. Uh, perhaps a bigger uh, sphere of industry that uses nanoscience is the specialty materials companies, those that make particles, nanoparticles or nanostructured materials that end up in a wide variety of consumer and industrial products, paints, pigments, coatings, uh, filters for water and lubrication uh, oils, uh, sealants, security inks for currency, displays, and, the, and the many different types of particles that go into personal care and cosmetic products. These are all companies that are consistently hiring. And again, knowledge of uh, the nano uh, scale, especially the, the chemical aspects of nanoparticles, this is a very uh, good place to find employment. An exciting emerging area of applied nanoscience is in the area of drug delivery. So pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Abbott and GlaxoSmithKline are working, all working in these areas of encapsulating drugs so that they are better at getting where you want them to go. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's a couple of um, uh, different types of encapsulation uh, approaches using lipid molecules, you know, the, the, bi, the uh, bifunctional molecules that have a hydrophobic end on one end and a hydrophilic end on the other end. And these can be fabricated into little cells or little capsules that can very effectively deliver either hydrophobic or hydrophilic drugs to uh, the patient. Uh, even more advanced area is taking nanoparticles, like is pictured on the left-hand side, and attaching molecules to the surface which A, can, uh, if you attach the drug molecule on it, you can uh, deliver the drug molecule with that particle. And B, you can attach a little bit of a targeting uh, molecule, such as a protein or an amino acid, which will help the particles stick to the tissue you want them delivered to. So this part of nanoparticle drug uh, targeting has resulted in a couple of uh, FDA approved uh, therapies for cancer medication but it opens up a lot of possibilities for direct dosing and much more efficient treatment of many diseases. So nanoparticle drug delivery, a very exciting area for um, pharmaceuticals. And in particular right now, uh, you may know that the COVID vaccine uh, is based uh, not on a, a weakened whole vaccine, but on a piece of messenger RNA. Well, you can't just squirt that into a, uh, a patient. It has to be encapsulated in a lipid nanoparticle and then, uh, as you can see in the, in the cartoon on the right-hand side, that nanoparticle is able to uh, be absorbed through the cell nucle the cell wall and then get into the, uh, the cell nucleus so that it can operate. Uh, this is a very uh, promising technology because it promises to be the way that we uh, develop future vaccines. It enables us to go much faster in the, in the uh, development process. And there's a shortage of, uh, I mean, this is one of the, the uh, shortfalls in rolling out the COVID vaccine, not the only one, of course, but in terms of getting the designing and maintaining the equipment to make these lipid nanoparticles and have a, having a knowledgeable operator, this is definitely going to be a growth area for those that know about nanotechnology. Uh, there's also more prosaic applications of, of nanotechnology, nanoscience or particle science particularly in the food processing area, right, where uh, big food uh, companies are routinely developing new products based on particles or powders that have to have certain properties and formulations to add color, flavor, texture, other properties to the food product. So uh, again, knowing, knowing about microscale and nanoscale phenomena, uh, particularly as it regards to uh, fluids and droplet formation and so forth, a big employer of people knowledgeable about this area. And there's a, a large kind of invisible uh, market sphere 
of analytical labs. These are mostly small to medium-sized companies, but they employ uh, technologists and scientists who are going to be exploring the physical and uh, chemical and in some cases biological properties of samples. And knowing the uh, technology, knowing the analytical technology, uh, like you would learn in a nanoscience program, this is a, a place where you can apply these skills as well. So lots of jobs in lots of different areas. Um, and a lot of a range of, of working environments as well. Uh, when I was working with a uh, two-year, our, our local two-year nanoscience program, I had placed a lot of our students in small companies and in startup companies where a lot of exciting work is done and offers the students a real uh, opportunity to grow because in small companies, you tend to have to wear lots of different hats. You may learn about engineering as well as business development or sales or the other uh, people parts of the, of the business. So much should be said about small companies. On the other hand, large companies are also hiring these folks and can uh, offer advantages such as uh, offering to support further education. A number of my two years associate's degree students uh, joined companies which then sponsored their completion of a bachelor's degree and in some cases are going on to an advanced degree. So a lot of different environments, a lot of different, different job titles, a lot of different, different things to do for uh, students who are interested in this area. So I want to encourage you, if, if it's students that are interested in this area, uh, offer them offer them the, the unvarnished truth that, yeah, there's lots of, lots of jobs out there. In terms of preparation, uh, you can advise your students, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to want to concentrate on, on uh, high school subjects of chemistry, physics, and biology. These are all good preparations for uh, nanoscience, nanotechnology careers. Options after high school are at all levels. Uh, those who are interested in uh, four years, two-year college uh, programs, associate's degrees. There are several programs around the country that are offered, that offer uh, two-year associate's programs. Uh, and a good clearinghouse for that information is a new education center and the National Science Foundation funded uh, center called the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center or uh, MNTEC that uh, has information about these programs around the country. Uh, those students who are interested in a bachelor's degree, uh, there's relatively few four-year programs called nanotechnology programs. I mean, getting a four-year bachelor's in nano, nanotechnology is fairly rare. More common is that students will pursue traditional engineering discipline degrees, such as electrical, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, even uh, civil and environmental engineering is a, is a pathway into a nanoscience career. Uh, at the higher levels of more advanced degrees, typically, uh, people are working in the uh, physical sciences or bi biological sciences in some cases, uh, some cases pharmaceutics, uh, and also the, the engineer, advanced engineering is also a pathway to be uh, out on the nanoscience uh, end of, of the program. So uh, just, just to wrap up, a couple of websites to look over. Uh, the uh, the nano.gov website has a great introduction to nanotechnology you may also want to check out. That two-year uh, nanotechnology training program clearinghouse, uh, MicroNano and Mintech, that uh, is getting a new website. So they have kind of a temporary space holder website at this address, but uh, uh, there's going to be a new, uh, more elaborate, more useful website launched soon in that area. And we can share that with you when it comes available. And then uh, I'll point you to our own NNCI website for a nice overview of other careers in nanotechnology.